you know, doesn't she intervene? And Neytiri says, she only intervenes to restore the balance of life. That's a beautiful, beautiful line. You know, whatever else you may say about that film or James Cameron, uh, that is a very inspired line. And so Gaia Sophia is now intervening. She's intervening in a way that I couldn't say before because I couldn't know what it was until it was happening. I couldn't predict it. I couldn't invent it. I couldn't second guess it. And the the message that I'm giving to the people who are now working with me on this, um, on the deck of, of the mothership, following the navigation, the message that I'm giving is, we come into correction with Gaia in real time. And this is real time. And what is happening in real time? A number of things. First of all, I see now what she's doing. I see now how she's going to make her intervention. And she's making it on several fronts, but primarily she's going to make it by actually breaking into the human mind. Not going to, she is. Try to think of a supernatural power breaking into the human mind rather in the way that a, that a wave of surf would break through a plate glass window into a room. She's, going, she's breaking into the human mind. And how does she then reveal her presence to us and say, in effect, speak to our hearts and speak to our minds? She does it through the awesome power of her beauty. Beauty is her weapon. Beauty is the most powerful weapon of the earth goddess. And her beauty is breaking into the human mind with correction. And this started in March, on the 19th of March, and is continuing with an accelerating and amplifying move. And as the beauty of the Divine Sophia breaks into human imagination, there it produces spontaneous spiritual experiences, spontaneous awakenings in all kinds of people all around the world in different moments. And these awakenings can happen in a dream. People have been reporting to me dreams, and typically the dream will involve white. A white woman, a woman in a white robe, a white uh, animal, or just white clouds. Uh, because white is the color of the organic light. It has nothing to do with racial, white or black. Sure. It happens to be the color of the organic light. And so this breakthrough is happening in a general sense with the beauty of Gaia coming to recognition in people's minds. And it's happening in a specific sense, in, a, in a remarkable ways. For instance, on the 19th, she made her first hit on the human psyche. She's hitting the human psyche, yours, mine, everybody's, with a kind of an impact that is very intentional. And the purpose of the impact, the first impact was on March 11th. Uh, March nineteenth, rather. We had, had a, we had a hmm? we had a super moon that super called moon. Is that super it? Super moon, yeah. right? Yeah, and I can't go into it now. But in the navigational uh, process that I'm developing uh, on the deck of the mothership, as it were, I explain that the that the mechanism of the moon, which is called the line of the apsides, the Barry center, and the line where the moon, the point where the moon is closest to the Earth, which is its perigee and furthest from the Earth, that that mechanism is actually the steerage of the Earth. Gaia uses the lunar mechanism to steer the Earth in interstellar space. And I can actually demonstrate how she does this and say what way she is steering it at each particular moment. And people can observe whether this is true or not. I'm not asking anybody to believe me on faith. You can observe it. And so what happened was that the moon was at its perigee, on March 19th, it was a supermoon because it was very, very close to the Earth. That happens once a month. And that is the moment when a signal went out from the interior of the Earth, which indicated that Gaia was beginning her course correction. And that signal was due to the fact that the Barry Center, which is a point 
of mass, shared mass between the Earth and the Moon, which circulates inside the Earth, momentarily exceeded the speed of sound. And as a result of that, there were anomalous phenomena at that moment. You picked up on a number of them, as many people did. One of them was the sounds coming from uh, these caves in Tibet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another one was rumblings and inexplicable roarings coming from somewhere inside the Earth that were reported in Canada, uh, in Florida, and some of these are still continuing. England, I remember and, a little village in England had a, some weird hum. Uh, you know. That's right. Yeah. The village in England where they're now trying to investigate where this is coming from. Yeah. These anomalies are due to the activation of the steerage mechanism of the Earth-Moon system. Steerage. So as she steers, and the, what she steers with is kind of like, imagine it like, not like a steering wheel that's round, but more like a yoke. Like a like, rotter? Like, no, like a yoke like you use in a video game. Right. A control yoke, yeah. Or like the yoke on, a, on an airplane, okay? Right. She uses a yoke, and this yoke is actually the, the Earth-Moon barycenter device. One handle of the yoke is the perigee, and the other handle of the yoke is the apogee. And she actually steers because these two points are not constant. And by observing the way these two points, apogee and perigee of the moon, are moving, I can plot how she's steering the planet. Hmm. Very interesting. And you, who are interested, perhaps, in following that, can then make observations and compare those observations with what I say. Don't ask anybody to accept me on faith. It can be verified. This is what I've been doing now. This is what I am doing now since the process of correction began. So I just want to conclude by saying that the process of correction is not only the breaking into the human mind and imagination of an immense source of beauty, which is the presence of Sophia herself. It's not only a supernatural and metaphysical event, it is an actual astronomical event, which can be plotted, charted, and verified. That is the fantastic thing about correction. We can know that it's happening in real time. And as Sophia brings the power of her attention to the human condition and brings the power of her mind into our mind, she's not going to intervene in 